107.5 WBLS, your number one source for R&B. 107.5 WBLS, my name is Jameer, and you are hanging out with me in the WBLS studio. We have a beautiful young lady here. <laughs> she is a wonderful singer, and... I've listened to a lot of her stuff, and it connects with me. A tear may sometimes fall out my left eye, but she is that passionate about her work. She just performed at Essence, and uh, she has a new album coming out called Blood. And you get a chance, you guys, if you don't know her, you get a chance to meet her right now. Leanne La Havis. <laughs> I just want to make sure I got it all right. I know, but it, you mustn't be afraid. It's okay. exactly as it's spelled. Okay, okay. So it's phonetic. Phonetic. Yeah. Leanne Lavas. La That's Havis. what it looks like. Yeah. Okay. Just making sure. Yeah, you no, know? I, am, I know. It seems scary, but it's not. <laughs> <laughs> it's a very intimidating name. <laughs> Just a tad bit. Yeah. So how are you? How are you? I'm fine. How are you? I am I am excellent. I am excellent. You you come from a very interesting background. Um you you are your father's Greek. Yes. And your mother's Jamaican. Yes. And you come from England. Yes. Okay. How'd that work out? What was the dynamic in that house? Uh, how'd you grow up musically? And uh, how'd that shape you to become the woman who you are today? Uh, um, well, my my parents were both born in London. Okay. My grandparents are from Greece and Jamaica. Mm. Uh, and I was actually raised by my Jamaican grandparents oh. in south london um but i saw my mum and dad and i knew my greek grandparents or my greek grandmother mm -hmm. very well so it was just a very eclectic upbringing and very you know i i guess just kind of liked what i liked mm -hmm. and did what i did um and I listened to loads of types of music when I was growing up. My father was, um, and still is, very musical. Okay. So he plays lots of musical instruments, and so does his brother and sister. Mm. So they're all kind of involved in music, not in the industry, okay. but just playing music for pleasure, mm. which is what my dad has always taught me. Um and they're just all very artistic. My dad's actually a stonemason. Wow. So he was carving stuff and and I like drawing as well. So I don't know, we just share that. Um, and my mother is a very big music fan. Mm. So she, I think, helped form my taste very early on. She loved, we're talking about her earlier, Mary J. Blige. She, she loved, loved Mary, yeah. And she loved Michael Jackson and, you know, Stevie Wonder, all that stuff. Um, and my dad also loved all of that stuff, as well as, you know, jazz and world music and Greek music mm. and, um, you know, Brazilian music. Oh. I don't know, loads of stuff. So, yeah. And, and, and then I, and now I'm, now I'm me. You are you. <laughs> I'm still me. You were still a, a uh, young person. But I've used what i've heard probably it's like an amalgamation of everything that i've ever heard probably okay. has made me make the music i now make nice i'm very interested aside from music do you still do you have a do you, do you know how to talk patois <laughs> do you have a jamaican I accent i do know how but i'm not gonna do okay it. okay it was gonna <laughs> earn you some big points shout I'm out sorry. to brooklyn <laughs> uh. <laughs> it's um something that i can't do on demand okay it just comes out probably when yes. you're angry a little bit well actually when i'm talking to my great grandmother okay. or when i'm just around my jamaican family because i understand what they're saying mm -hmm. i just sort of feel like uh the need to interject to do it. sometimes <laughs> <laughs> you just stay back you let yes. Them hold that. okay yes okay so who, who was really the first i guess r&b star or soul singer that you said to yourself wow i can really do this just the first actual voice that I really enjoyed listening to um, was Lauren Hill. Wow. So, yeah, when I was a kid, I, you know, I just thought that is a beautiful voice. Mm -hmm. And it still is nothing but a beautiful voice. Yeah. And then later on, I got into a lot of jazz and um, Ella Fitzgerald, I think, is actually my favorite singer of all time. Mm. Um, and why? Why? She... Her tone to me was just, 
it was perfect it had everything it sounded she could do soft singing she could do hard singing she could for me though it's her rhythm mm. her actual being able to get so many notes and so many through notes mm. into that s real into she had her own pocket so i just really responded to that and her control is what i'm trying to say she mm -hmm. has incredible control lauren and ella i think are two amazing two, it's a good yeah. place to start yeah 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 you have <laughs> top two i yeah. got you i yeah. got you um and it's funny that you say ella and that you were influenced by jazz because you can hear that all through your soul and your voice um yeah. especially on your first album your debut album yes. Uh, which was to me an array of different of motions. Yeah. Um, talk about the inspiration for that album. Did somebody hurt you? Do we have to go track <laughs> that man down? No, we don't need to. Okay. Because that would be giving him too much okay. attention. <laughs> okay. Um, but yeah, I, you know, I was, when did I start writing it? Started when I was about 19 mm. writing it. And I think emotions can get pretty. Uh, intense when you're a teenager right so yeah I was you know falling in in love and everything uh, and I had my heart broken for the first time and it's actually pretty bad yeah <laughs> it turns out so a lot of that album is about how I felt mm -hmm. um, but during all of that I then met the person that sort of sort of got me out of it so then you've got like the second half of the album which is actually really right. optimistic yeah <laughs> it's like a it's a smooth blend yeah. like i was wondering i was like well were you happy one day with the guy and then he was mad the next day because you you go from songs like lost and found which is truly i mean mm. painful mm. you're talking about that heartbreak yeah yeah that's, that's so that's great. that guy yeah and then uh, there's a song called Age, yes, and that's the new guy, and okay. it has actually both of them in it, uh, and it's it sort of signifies the meeting of one and the leaving of another. Right. <laughs> yeah. Maybe a a year or two later. Yes. I noticed that you had hooked up with Prince, <laughs> which was that's what you mean by hooked up? Not hooked up, not hooked <laughs> up like that. You guys musically, yes, linked up. Yes, we did. Which I think is astonishing because Prince is Prince. Prince is Prince. Of yes. course, very secluded. Prince makes music and he'll put it in a dungeon for people never to hear. Yeah. But I thought it was very interesting that you guys found each other. Can you talk a little bit about how you met Prince and yeah. uh, how he reached out to you? He, well, that's exactly what happened. He, he found me via the music I had released. Mm -hmm. So I released an EP before my first album. Yes. It was called Lost and Found. Mm -hmm. uh, and then he called me on the phone. <laughs> really? Was yes. the number blocked? Yes. Okay, of course. Of Just course making, it was. Making <laughs> but yes, it was... Um, that's what happened. And he... Uh, <laughs> he just called my phone. Did you believe it was him at first? No. No. <laughs> well... The thing was, I was told in the morning of the call that it was going to happen, but we didn't know when. So yeah. I was just told to have my phone with me. But I actually went out and forgot my phone. As you do. The <laughs> only time that I forget my phone is so when Prince, Prince is going to call. call. <laughs> so uh, he had to call my boyfriend's phone instead. Okay. Which was fine, but his battery was low. <laughs> oh my gosh all these things against us but then yeah so the the call happened though and it was a block number so i had to i had to be like i'm i'm really sorry i just have to ask who who is this <laughs> 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 and he said i think you know who this is get out uh, well of course <laughs> prince would say that so it's just it's just funny because i was like yes okay cool i was just i was just checking um and then we proceeded to speak about music mm. and it was all very lovely and he was very lovely and charming and um i was you know kind of just a bumbling idiot on the phone with him Prince, yeah. um but yeah i don't know i just tried to be cool mm -hmm. and we just talked about stuff and then 
you know and then we said our goodbyes and then I and the next thing I then when I actually met him in real life was uh going to Paisley Park wow I was invited up there by him That's to amazing. just meet and just chat and it was great and we just had a lovely time <laughs> and just played some guitar together wow <laughs> as you do uh at some crudités and uh talked again a lot about music mm -hmm. so yeah we stayed in touch now for a few years so yeah yeah what was what, something what, what was something that you were pressed about prince that you may have not known or something that made you go like wow i didn't know prince did this i mean i don't know just the fact that he's like a normal guy a regular person yeah <laughs> like you you know you think he's you know not real you know yes. the I, the the persona would suggest that he doesn't you know like eat or anything but he eats food and he's <laughs> he walks around <laughs> he breathes <laughs> air he breathes <laughs> air and he's a real person with skin <laughs> and feet so yes okay <laughs> that was the thing that was most surprising so he was he was normal like because you know you're you as normal Prince. as he can be okay. but he you know he's a real person with a heart and soul like the rest of us and that, right. that was wonderful to know that yeah 